Now, sometimes exploiting the target, like I just showed you, will not work, but the target is still vulnerable. So let me show you an example of that. Again, we're gonna turn on our interceptor. I already know that this is vulnerable, but in a real life scenario, you'd wanna test everything and you know see the normal behavior of it. And again, test the product ID. I'm gonna forward it because I know the next one is the vulnerable one. It's a similar endpoint and a similar parameter. We're gonna send it to the repeater. But right now, if we try the exploit that we tried earlier, so if we just try to load etc password and send it, you'll see that nothing is gonna load. Now, in many cases, you're not gonna see an error saying no such file. You'll probably just get a 400 or it's just not gonna load at all, but you will just know that it's not working for you. Now, we know the file path exists on the system and that's why we're using such file paths, paths that always exist on the target system. So we know that that definitely exists. So at this stage, there are two possibilities. Either the target is not vulnerable or the target is vulnerable, but it's not loading what you want for some reason. And that's why we usually, let me just turn off the interceptor, go to another product, open the image in a new tab, get its file name, so it's 36.jpg, and then we go back to the repeater and we try to load that image again. So we're using the same request to the same endpoint, and if we send that, you can see that we're able to load other images. So again, that makes me think that it's only allowing me to load files from within a certain directory. That directory could be called images, could be called IMG. We don't really know what it's called, but it is allowing us to change whatever values that come after the directory name, and it is loading these files to me. And therefore, I would choose to spend more time with such endpoint because it is likely to be vulnerable. Now, when we are put in ETC password, it's not accepting it. Therefore, I would go with the other option, which is it is vulnerable, but maybe it has some restrictions or filters. So the next thing I would try, instead of putting the absolute path, which is ETC password. So I said an absolute path because we're starting with a forward slash. So we're starting from the base of the file system. What I can do is I can go back. So assuming I'm in the images, I can go back one, two, three directories and then load my ETC. So if you wanna go back up one directory in the file system, you can simply type dot dot in Linux. So what I would do is I would go back up one directory cause I don't know where I am. So I'm gonna go back up one directory and try to load ETC password. If it doesn't work, I'll go back another directory and try to load etc password. If it doesn't work, I'll go back another one and try to load etc password. Now, in many cases, people just put as many up directories as possible. So they go back to the base and maybe even go back a bit more, but you can't go back more than the base. So they just put as many dot dots as possible and then they load the file they want. But I'm just gonna do it one by one and I actually just prefer to do it that way. It just makes more sense. I like to make the least amount of modifications to my exploits as possible. So I'm gonna send it like this. It doesn't work. I'm gonna add another dot dot send it again, doesn't work. So I'm basically going up one directory every time I type dot dot. So let's go back another time and we send it and this time it's not rendering. So hopefully we're loading something. And if we go on the raw, as you can see, we have all of the users registered on the target system. And because we are able to load files beyond our limits, that means this is a broken access control vulnerability and it falls under the path traversal or directory traversal because we're basically moving through the file system and loading files and directories from within the file system. It's allowing us to access paths and directories that we're not supposed to have access to. So in a pen test, you should definitely include this in your report. The data you get in here is going to be very useful to you because in a pen test, small information could click together and allow you to exploit the system further. And in a bug bounty, you actually don't need to go any further than this. This is enough to display impact. So you could use this information in your report and you will definitely be awarded a bounty.